Tom, and you are watching Social Chatter, your weekly social media marketing talk show. This is episode 188. We've got some great topics that we want to talk with you about today. Topics about Facebook and Instagram and more Facebook and more Instagram, as well as a host of very useful tools as well. But um, I'm going to pop on and say a quick hello. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring on Phil. So, hey guys, how you doing? So I'm not in my usual spot. I'm actually broadcasting this week. And surprisingly, I'm actually in a cave, which is really cool. Um, I've never done a live show from basically a cave underground. So this is pretty cool. Uh, but I'm excited about this. Uh, but let me go ahead and bring Phil on. Phil, how are you doing this week? What's up, Christian? It's good to see you. Good to see you as well, man. I'm, I'm glad we're getting back to the regular. Yeah, as regular as we can be, you know, right? We have. Absolutely. You know, but here's the thing with live video. You make do with it. Um, you know, you can try different things. For example, if you want to, you know, do a weekly show, you can do a Facebook live show. You can do a Facebook premiere as well, uh, which uh, we just published an article this week on that on uh, socialstuff.com forward slash FB premiere that basically shows you how to do a premiere, which is like a live video, um, except for instance, we would just pre-record the video. So um, pretty cool but definite article to check out. But um, how has your week been, man? Anything uh, new and exciting? Oh, boy. Let's see. What's new and exciting here? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to catch up. I'm st- okay. I feel a little behind. I haven't published my own podcast in three weeks. I've had one that I featured yeah. purposely for a week, but now I got to mm-hmm. get back after it. So that's, that's big for me, man. I got to just get back in the routine, focus on the right now, which is why I'm excited to be here today talking to you and talking to the co-founder of StreamYard. Holy cow, man. That's a good get. Yes, yes. And by the way, that's the platform that we're using. We're using StreamYard to broadcast uh, social chatter. We've been using it for was it a couple months now, yep. adding some different elements here and there. Um, I got to say, I love the platform. You know, you know, you know that how much I love tools and just talking about how they're very useful. And I got to say, this is a very useful platform. It is fantastic. It works extremely well. It's very well organized and thought out. And, you know, overall, I haven't come across any issues. I, I've you know, I love just basically all the flexibility that it offers me. And the other thing I like is, you know, for example, you can easily pass off the uh, co-hosting duties uh, each week. For example, if you have a co-host, um, you can also view from mobile as well, which is very useful, especially yep. useful, actually. Uh, that was, I think, that and, you know, the co-hosting duties, that was definitely something that we had challenges with when using other platforms. So definitely uh, getting top marks in my book. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, super excited, man. This is this is a, a great great tool. So really excited for this. Uh, gonna, you know, excited to excited to hear. Maybe maybe we'll sneak in some some uh, some sneaky stuff from uh, from from uh, from Gage, right? Definitely, definitely. So let me go ahead and bring him on, and I'm gonna do a couple things behind the scenes. But Gage, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for uh, having me on, guys. I really appreciate it. I'm looking yeah. forward to some social chatter. Anytime. And, and I got to say, man, um, I, I love the tool. Uh, you know, I think you probably just saw me mention that a minute ago, but very useful. Um, Thanks, yeah. Very, very, very good tool. And it's it seems very stable as well, which I think is very important. Yeah, that's really important, library. right? Like you can have all the features in the world. If things are uh, falling apart on you, it doesn't matter, right? You can have all the bells and whistles. It's the it's the core stuff that I think is really important. So that's right. To focus on that. Yeah, Definitely. and it's easy. I think one of the other things is easy for people who aren't live streamers but who want a live show. I think this makes it really easy, Gage. Which congratulations to you guys, man. Good stuff. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. We let the easy easiness factor is important to us too because I mean, even like I'm a relatively technical person with OBS and things like that. But most of the time, when I'm doing a show, like I don't want to worry about opening all these programs and making sure it's all set up. Like sometimes it's nice to just pop on Chrome and just be able yeah. to go live. So I do like that aspect of it as yeah. well. And we're broadcasting to um, YouTube, to actually a couple of YouTube channels as well. And that's another feature I really like about the platform, you know, is that, um, you know, I can tie it into Restream.io, which lets us broadcast as well to uh, multiple Facebook channels. And you can go what, you can go to Twitch, you can go to uh, a whole bunch of other different areas as well. So you basically broadcast to re- uh, StreamYard, use that as your base, and then uh, simulcast to the other platforms. So definitely something to, uh, yeah, I guess, create integrations. Thanks. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thanks for having me on again. I'm uh, looking forward to the show. Anytime. So I want to thank everybody who's watching, uh, spending a little bit of your time with us. If you're on Facebook, uh, if you're on YouTube, uh, don't 
publish a new episode, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Um, I think that's, you know, again, that'll just get you notified when we're going live. Um, so thanks a lot, everyone, for joining us. So, Phil, where do you want to start this week, by the way? I said, you know, there's a lot of Facebook, there's a lot of Instagram topics this week. What do you want to cover? Yeah, well, let's let's cover something that I think is kind of innocuous, and that is the new features for Facebook 3D photos. This is uh, this is an interesting move, I think. Facebook just bringing 3D to stories because they don't stay up that long. Like, and if I want to yeah. look at a 3D story, uh, it's going to be gone in 15 seconds. So I, I think that's really interesting, but it does tell me what we've talked about a lot in the past, and that is Facebook and Instagram are going to move away from the feed and into stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Full stop, right? That's going to happen. So I think this is just one more one more time that Facebook is saying, ha-ha, we introduced something to see if it works, and now we're going to try it in stories to see if it's any good. I don't know. Gage, are you, are you a stories guy? Is this of any interest to you? To be honest, I'm a bit of a social uh, media noob, so hopefully I can uh, contribute in some meaningful way. But I like the stories. I um, they're easier to consume, right? Like I like being able to just click on people and scroll through. It's just compared to a feed where it's almost, it's kind of arduous to go through a feed for a long period of time where I can sort of see like, oh, so-and-so has a new story, so-and-so has a new story. So I'm a fan of the stories, yeah. Cool, cool. Do you find yourself spending more time there or more time in your in the stream? Or do you find yourself, like you said, you're a noob, but do, so do you not spend a lot of time on social or talk I to spend, me? I spend a lot of time on social. I'm just a noob as far as like, the intricacies of the platforms. Like I spend a ton of time in Facebook groups. Like that's the main gotcha. thing I spend time in. Yep. Um, but I, I, I like stories. I, like, as far as me on social media outside of work, that's, that is what I generally consume to see what my friends are up to. I'll click on their stories. I'm not usually actually going to their profile and going through their feed or anything like that. Cool. And the 3D photos are cool too. I, I actually have not seen that many of them, but every time I see one on my feed, it definitely stops me. And I definitely mm. take a, a look at it because it is eye-catching. Is it, is it eye-catching or is it just new, right? I'm, I'm curious. Well, I think it's eye-catching because it's new. So okay. <laughs> there's lots of them. I don't think it will make the difference. But Yeah, because like we look at this one on this page here. Christian, can you move move that up just a little bit yeah, and sure. look at the yeah. difference there? Because this is interesting, right? It's got to be two files, which tells me now this is going to be a lot of work to do. But yes. it, it, it does look it does look interesting. I don't know. They, I think they've got to make it easier. Christian, you're, I know you like to play with stuff like this. What are you, what are you thinking? What do you see? I like the idea of doing 3D photos. For example, you could do them from the web, you know, the mobile version as well. Uh, but, you know, and the fact that you could put them in the stories, I think that's very useful. But it's, it seems like to me a lot of work to do as well. Um, you know, for example, screenshot Facebook here. But basically, they're taking a couple of files, um, they're dragging them into um, a, a, a Facebook post, and then it's creating a 3D, po- uh, 3D photo. I love, you know, as Gage mentioned, the 3D photos, like they make me want to stop what I'm doing on newsfeed. If I'm reading a newsfeed, for example, they make me want to stop and look at the photos because I'm always fascinated with, yeah, you know, really, it's how good is the photo that somebody shared? To me, that is the best part um, of the 3D photo feature. But this to me looks like a lot of work. And I don't know, they want people to use this in stories. I mean, people are already having a hard time to use stories to begin with. So to me, it's just, you know, it's it's more clutter in a way. Yeah. Yeah. More I think more experimentation, little impact for business owners at this point. But certainly, you know, if you have something hot that you want to share, if you've got a great graphic, if you're doing a great event, if you've got mm-hmm. a great, you know, if you just launched a new line of whiskey or line of wine and you want to see the depth of it. And the and the legs on the yeah. line that could be really cool, but at the same time, man, for that something that's cool only going to be around for twenty four hours, this is a lot of work. Yeah, I'd I, rather do a Facebook Live, right? I'd rather talk about it. I'd rather go real three D instead of just a, a static picture. Absolutely, Gage. What were you saying there? Oh, I was just saying that that does sound cool. The, like a wine bottle with the legs that would be cool. But uh, are you able to use this stuff? In advertisements, because that could be a that could be interesting. Well, that's that's going to be next, right? So once you pop it in stories, you can probably do a sponsored story. That'll okay. work. You know that again. The the challenge with that is stories and your feed don't always mesh. Right. And if right. I want to, like, if I want to sponsor something, you that's great. You said you'd love stories. You go there, you catch up your friends. But it's like friend, friend. Holy crap! I'm interrupting you, and now I got some shit. Right. I mean yeah. that's. 
That's a good point because I, I don't, I don't, know, I don't click brands on. Yeah. Stories. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, it, brands are going to be sexed up. They're going to think this is really, really cool. I think because somebody like, you know, like the one of the three of us is going to get them hyped up about the potential. But frankly, I don't know what the conversion is. I don't know how this converts right. unless, again, unless you're buying one thing, right? Maybe a, maybe a $10,000 photo, right? I've got mm -hmm. a guy that I know that does amazing, amazing photography. Well, yeah. if he can somehow get in front of those people, those business owners, which Facebook, frankly, doesn't do a good job of understanding what people's jobs are. I don't know. We'll see that that's possible. But this is I don't know. This could be much ado about nothing, in my opinion. By the way, I think you both brought a really good point here, which is in stories. Do you actually and this is what I want to hear from you know, viewers, for example, do you actually take the time to, uh, you know, click on or tap on stories from brands? You know, you, Gage, you mentioned you really don't do that. Phil, I don't think you probably do Not a much chance. Of it either. Because here's the thing. You know it. There's no element of surprise in a way. You know what you're going to Right. Probably some form of, you know, you're not, you don't want the brand to be driving your purchases. You want to be the one driving your own purchases. And so, you know, I, I think in a way, like, there needs to be a whole element of surprise and, you know that that might be a difficult thing to tackle. I think, um, for example, you know if I if I'm you know predisposed that like I know that it's a brand. Oh, chances are they're going to sell me something or try to sell me something. I'm not going to click on it. I think brands are going to have a much more difficult time to actually you know to to get the to reach the customer. I think uh, they're going to have to have a lot of customer strong customer loyalty. I think. But yeah, I think loyalty would be a big part of that. But there are certain brands that I might click on just because I would assume their stories would be pretty interesting. Like I could see myself clicking on like a Red Bull story or something like that. Okay. There's probably yeah. be some cool stuff in there. But other than a few brands, I'm probably not clicking on on the stories. Yeah. Well, that's so top of funnel though, right? That's the challenge. It's so awareness. I mean, Red Bull, yeah, they have some of our loyalty, but frankly, are you buying more Red Bull gauge because you click on their story? I, I do not drink Red Bull. I just right? like the big jumps. I like the big jumps. Yeah. No, I mean, straight up, right? That's the thing. I do too. And frankly, unless they really wow me, you, Christian, you mentioned the word surprise, but the other half of that conversation is delight. Yeah. Right. I want to be mm -hmm. delighted with the brand surprise right. Red Bull jumping out of a, you know, Felix jumping out of a uh, spaceship. Hey, that's really mm -hmm. cool. But it doesn't delight me about the brand at all. It's like, oh, that's nice, right? They do that, but then what? Like, I don't drink that crap. That stuff's gonna put, rot my guts, right? I'm gonna die because I drink too much taurine. That's just, right. that, that's mm -hmm. a non-starter. That's a non-starter yeah. and, and, and if anybody ever asks me what I think about it, and I'm not, I'm not slagging on Red Bull, but I'm just saying, if anybody asks me what I think, I'd be like, I'm not drinking that. I mean, they do some cool marketing tactics. They, they, they sponsor some cool race cars. They've probably got a, a soccer team somewhere. But is it, does that help? I, I don't know. That's I don't know. It seems much ado about nothing. But but maybe it's not right. Maybe it's not. Maybe I'm just not the right audience. That could be. We'll see. But a 3D Red Bull can really doesn't excite me. Just to be clear. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, here's the thing. And there's a big like. I love the fact that Facebook is trying to push forward with 3D. Yeah. The big challenge, at least for me, that I see with a lot of businesses is that they're not ready for this. Like. They're still most businesses I notice they're still struggling, for instance, with Facebook or getting their social media strategy together, you know, or like just, you know, for example, they don't most businesses don't have a social media strategy. They just, you know, just post and hope that people are going to view it, you know, adding, you know, 3D photos, for example, like if they're not used to stories, for example, or, you know, they haven't really even experimented with 3D photos on their profile. Um, I think they're going to struggle with this. And, you know, by the way, if you want to learn how to, you know, how these features work, for example, start with your profile, test some different ways to share content. For example, your profile, for example, give that a try, see how it works, see what kind of reaction your friends get. I bet you all, all of them are gonna say, hey, that's really cool. But then start to look at, you know, um, are there other brands or whatnot that are also, you know, other brands or other people that are doing the same thing. You know, if you have questions, don't, don't be uh, hesitant to reach out to those people and ask them, hey, how'd you create that? Um, because hopefully people will be you know upfront and want to help you and say, hey, you know what? I was struggling as well with that. Here's how I did it. Yeah. So, uh, so that's uh, 3D photos. Uh, lots of new features for 3D photos this year coming out. 3D photos and stories, uh, creation on the web, and whatnot. But um, Phil, you want to stick with Facebook here? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go over to their advertising tools. This is, I think this yeah. is one more way that Facebook is. They're attempting to give agencies more help 
But in yeah. many ways, what they're doing is they're making it more difficult for the solo business owner to do things. Because so, they're, okay. they're really setting this up so that it is set up for an agency. Set up not like I, I can tell you right now, I've got clients that are struggling to even boost a post in the right way. They try to boost it, boost it to men 40 to 65, and then the ad flips and it goes to women 20 to 35 because yeah. Facebook doesn't think that's the right audience for us. Because based yeah. on you know whatever Facebook changes that, well, now they're making it even more challenging because it's not clean. It's not easy. It's not simple to run an ad. Yes, the reporting is nice, but mm -hmm. to your point, Christian, that you said earlier, I just want to run an ad. Yeah. I don't have a strategy. I got 10 bucks and I'm hoping to boost something mm -hmm. to get a right, to thousand more dollars today. Absolutely. And, you know, and here's the thing, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm looking at this interface and hopefully you guys can see this also on screen, yeah. but the improved ads manager experience is what Facebook's calling this, a simpler ads manager. You know, and basically what Facebook's saying here, hey, we're gonna roll out a new ads manager interface, simplified navigation features, a cleaner design, and campaign management experience, space to manage ads and highlight tools that offer more insight into ad performance and reporting. Like that, I, I'm glad they're doing this, but I'm actually wondering, do they need an even simpler ad interface? For example, something kind of what you said, you know, um, something that, you know, hey, you wanna run a Facebook ad, you know, something as simple as I want to run a Facebook, like where maybe you can put common language in and have Facebook kind of, you know, run your ad that way. For example, either maybe using like artificial intelligence or, you know, just using just taking your, your simple language and knowing, hey, this person actually wants to just run a basic ad and let's just help them do that versus, you know, in this case, they got to figure out how this interface works. Um, to me, that's really complicated, I think, for a lot of people. Totally agree. Gage, are you guys doing any advertising? Are you are you playing with any of this? Just just very just starting out a very very little to experiment. Usually it'll be like just to announce a feature and we'll try yeah. try showing an ad to our specific uh, custom audience. Um, but as far as this change, I mean, mm -hmm. it, if it is actually simpler, that's good. I'm a little bit worried because I'm finally starting to like get used to navigating yeah. the current one. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully it doesn't change too dramatically. But yeah. I'm also not familiar but with plights of agencies, so it helps them maybe that's that's good as well and by the way i want to highlight something real quick like you know what, what gage did what they did with Streamyard, uh what i think is fantastic is you know they built the word of mouth for the platform like we covered the tool like i don't remember how how many episodes ago I don't know, probably it was a long time 13 ago. or 15 like, episodes ago yeah quite a while ago and you know i i you know i've been trying it out and like but the thing is they here's and i think gage correct me if i'm wrong on this but like you started a facebook group and then you start doing these town halls, for example, and then people started talking it up and then going into the community and then people started experimenting with it and trying it out. And you, I don't think you were running any ads. Oh, no, it's only very, it's like a week ago that I, I just wanted to experiment with because what's important to me is making sure people's live streams are successful. So if there's anything we can right. do to make our own live stream more successful, I want to learn that and then sort of either built into the product and guide people towards that or at least inform them about that. So that's the only reason why I've been sort of experimenting with Facebook ads. It's mostly like, okay, yeah. if I boost my town hall or targeted at specific people, can that grow our following on the live stream? But as far as growing our actual user base, it's almost entirely the mm -hmm. uh, word of mouth and yeah. live streaming in yeah. the Facebook group. And part of that, I think where you've done really well is the fact that you've brought live streamers in to the tool you know, the people that like, you know, hey, you know, somebody talking it up, for example, or, you know, really getting into the tool, you brought them into the group, uh, you know, they then see the Facebook page, you know, they try out the tool and whatnot. Um, I think you've got a winning formula in my opinion, I mean, just with how it's working. So I hope so, thanks, uh, yeah, we are growing pretty fast, so. Yeah, definitely. So this is the new improved ads manager. Add any One more time, Phil. Oh, I said Phil. Phil. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Uh, do you want to add anything? You want to add on the ads manager? You know, in these well, updates. Well, I, I just remind folks, right? So stay focused on your goals, right? Don't get distracted by the fact this is new and shiny. Certainly, you got to go yeah. in and figure this out. Take a little time to do that, but don't get distracted from your overall goals. And if your goal is just to boost fifty dollars or a hundred dollars a week, don't stress. Mm -hmm. Like, just you know, just figure out the the couple things you need to do in order to make that better. And then when you get bigger, when you have more, then you can do more. 
you know, that's perfectly fine. But don't don't stress. Don't let this don't let this bug you. We cover this stuff because it's important and we cover other stuff like this that sometimes we can't get to on the show in our daily email. If you just go to socialchefs.com slash daily, you can get signed up for the latest news, the latest tools. We do our best to show you how you can actually integrate this in your business. And keep in mind, some of this stuff isn't even available yet for everybody. We're trying to stay ahead of the curve so that when it is, you're ready for it. So that's socialchefs.com slash daily to check it out, get all the insights. Christian does a great job of sending this out to you. So check that out. By the way, speaking of features that are not yet available, Facebook is also going to be improving business manager. So if you're an agency or you know, you're trying to, for example, run Facebook ads and you want to farm it out to a team, for example, like we can help you with that. Um, if you, you know, instead of just giving them your, you, know, you don't want to give them your password, you can set a page role as uh, you know, an advertiser, for example, or you can just use business manager. Uh, Facebook is also going to be updating business manager to make it faster and easier to say for agencies to activate their clients' campaigns on Facebook. So that's something though that's that's way down the road later this year, I'd expect probably in the fall, but keep that in mind. But but that's a big update, I think, overall, just the interface to Facebook Ads Manager. So if you kind of figure it out, you know, keep, you know, here's the thing. Basically what's gonna happen is Facebook's gonna go in, they're gonna change the material design, the way it looks, for example, the user experience, but the functionality is still gonna be there. They're not just gonna say like, well, hey, let's, uh, let's change what we call, you know, how to create a campaign to something else. They're just gonna basically move it around. So it may mean, you know, um, learning, you know, how things kind of, where things are, you know, spend a little bit of time in that, but you don't have to do a lot of it, you know. So um, so that's an update this week from Facebook. Uh, Phil, where do you wanna go next, by the way? Well, so we've got more we've got more Facebook stuff, but let's move over to Instagram, because I think this is interesting, okay. that they're thinking about hiding like counts. Hiding like counts, yes. that's really fascinating. I, I don't, I. Man, it, it's almost like they really don't they really don't want to show what's popular unless you're paying for it. And I think this is really interesting. I, I really wonder how this is going to impact people. I mean, Twitter, Twitter is hiding a lot of stuff as well. And I gotta tell yeah. you, I I get it. Like I understand we want to focus on the quality. But frankly, how does discovery happen unless you show me what is popular? How does discovery happen? Just quality content. It's not a best. Uh, it's not a best written book. It's the best selling book. So some of this, sadly, you know, we got to have a little celebrity here, um, you know, to get that to get some popularity. But at the same time, I mean, I, I don't know. I get it. They, they use the example of the the stupid egg, right? That that then we saw one of our least favorite uh, favorite social media douchebags that decided to jump yeah. on that train and try to change his handle to the egg and put that as his picture in hopes of picking up more followers. I got to tell you, if it stops him from getting popular, from picking up any new followers, I'm all for it. But otherwise, I'm questionable. I don't know. Gage, what do you think? Uh, I might have a bit of a contrarian view on it because I, I people always say yeah, that sure. they like the idea of getting rid of the vanity metrics, but I, I don't know. I like vanity metrics. Maybe I'm vain. Like, uh, I like to know what other people think of things, you know, like I, yeah. on YouTube, especially like, I like knowing like, okay, if there's a tutorial, if I, I immediately just look at the like ratio, it's like, okay, what's this ratio here? If it's half dislikes, okay, great. I don't have to waste 30 minutes of my time looking at this, this video. Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, this isn't, this isn't for YouTube. This is for Instagram, but in some ways it still applies. I, I just like, I like knowing what other people think. So I'm not a huge fan of it. There's a, there's a reason why I'm on Instagram and likes are part of it. Yeah, yeah, totally. Christian, what about you, man? I I think that this is a test that they're doing. And I mean, you know, like testing, I think this is a test. I think they want to test their users. They want to test their users. For example, by removing like counts, they want to see, uh, you know, and this is, again, I mean, this is the thing with social media. Social media is one of those things that you do, you know, there's nothing that's like set in stone hey, just because this coffee brand is doing this or this retail business or this cosmetics company does something, oh, it's going to immediately work for me. So I think this is a bit of a test that they're they're doing, um, for example, because they want to make the platform, you know, they want to keep users coming back, but they also don't want people to gain the system. And so in my opinion, I think this is a very good, I think it's a good ex uh, thing to try out. I personally, you know, I look at, like, I know that there are posts that people are going to, you know, either get, Either buy their, you know, their likes, for instance, or their reactions on things, 
Um, so I take a lot of things that I see with a grain of salt. Um, so I think in, in this case, I, I like the idea that they're testing this. You know, yeah. remove, uh, impact somebody's content. Now, at the same time, I've seen too many videos. For example, I've seen videos of people that, you know, have been crying and upset because, you know, their account got shut down and that was their livelihood, for example, from a lot of these Instagram influencers or so-called influencers, you know, and in that, you know, and I wonder if there's going to be a, you know, backlash from that perspective. Um, this also reminds me, by the way, of, I don't know if you guys saw this, but there was an Instagram influencer and this is a person, they, they um, actually put together a video showing how they faked their entire trip to Coachella, <laughs> which was actually pretty awesome to watch um, because it does not, you know, like on this, like this is how easy it is to fake things. So uh, I'm going to drop the link to that, but Phil, yeah, go ahead. Ooh. Ooh, I don't want to see fake stuff, man. I want to see real stuff. I want to see real life. I want to see real vulnerability. I don't want, you know, I, I got to tell you, there's nothing worse than when I meet somebody in person and the Photoshop version of them on, on Instagram, the filtered version of them on Instagram, it looks nothing like them. So sometimes my glasses are orange, right? So you might not get the green glasses like you're getting today. You might get the white glasses, but you're always going to get me. Same guy, no filters, right? For me, drives me nuts nuts to meet people in person that look nothing like they do on Instagram. Absolutely. Um, the photo thing to me is a big thing. I mean, even if I go to a conference, for example, and I meet somebody, um, I'm anticipating, I, I want to see the person, for example, that I'm going to be meeting in person with. And, you know, a lot of times I see them and I'm like, oh, you look you know, a lot shorter, for example, or you don't look the same as your profile photo. And so it's pretty amazing. Um, to see that, but I'm going to drop this link to this Instagram article. It's actually a really fascinating one. So, uh, Gage, what do you think, by the way? I know. I thought they actually looked like that. I don't leave my apartment enough to find out. I thought people looked like how they look on Instagram. I'll have to pay attention at the next. So you I work. Have. You work too much. Is that what you're telling me, Gage? I don't know about too much, but I haven't seen. I, I just don't, haven't gone to that many conferences. But that's an interesting thing. So you guys notice, like, oh yeah, man. it's like they don't look the same. Yep, absolutely, man. Absolutely, like I can, I can slim my face so I look like I'm 130 pounds. Nice. Skin my neck out, right? Take out because I got, you know, I got a couple wrinkles here, right? Yeah, I can, I can smooth all those out with this beautiful face filter, and then they don't look anything like that. Or remove freckles, right? That's or whatever. It's yeah. like, yeah, that's gross. Don't do that. Just be you. No. You're beautiful just the way you are, folks. So if you're listening to this, I want to see your real pictures. I don't want to see your fake crap. Show me you. Be you. You're beautiful just the way you are. So no, I'm, I'm definitely in agreement with that. I like, I like real stuff on social media. And I, I mean, I think it, it is somewhat obvious. Like, uh, like you can tell when someone's real and when someone's not, or at least yeah. I like to think I can tell. No, let's hope, well, let's hope so. Right. But if they're never, if they're never honest though, if they're never yeah, they from behind their filter, right. That's, that's my challenge. And then I meet them in person and then there's no trust. I'm like, yeah. Oh, I really like them online. And then they show up and, the, the real version or like people are really, you know, I'm a speaker. So I see people on stage that are super nice, pour their heart out and then they get off stage and they're yelling at people because they didn't get the green M&Ms. Right. It's like, yeah, I don't like that stuff. Dang, you no. suck. Don't be that way. Just be one person. Yeah. Be you. So, so yeah, you have a, about MMs, at least do it on stage as well. There that's you right. go. That's yeah. right. Well, and, and that's the thing though. You, you bring, both bring up a great point, which is just transparency. You know, and it doesn't just apply to like, oh, hey, you know, I'm being transparent with the Facebook ads that I'm running or, you know, my Instagram channel, for example. It's like just when people meet you, for example, the people that you meet in person, you know, whether it's, you know, hey, you see them speaking, for example, they're the same person when you, when you speak to them, you know, uh, or you see them in a conference. Like they're not talking behind your back. They're not putting on a show. You know, there's a lot of people, that, you know, uh, tons of people that are really good at what they do. And, you know, they're the same personality in person that they are online. Yep. So um, I'd say, you know, just try to gravitate towards those people. Um, don't give the other people any more platform than they, than they need. That's right. So if you're watching, by the way, just let us know what you think. You know, um, you know, uh, do you ever run into the situation of, you know, hey, you've met somebody online and then they're different uh, than they are in person. You know, just let us know in the comments, um, you know, what you think about that. So Phil, yeah. let's uh, let's move into that other Instagram topic. What you yeah, think? let's talk about quiz stickers, which I think is really fun. I mean, this this actually is a fun option instead of just a one or two, yes or no, this or that. 
now we've got yeah. four choices here. Now you can add some reactions. I, I think this is nice. You can ask multiple choice questions. Um, see, they, they say, see how well your friends know you. Let's be honest. See how well your customers know you. That's really what we're talking about here, right? Mm -hmm. It's nice that we personally play with this, but yeah, we're going to play with this for business. How well do your customers know you? Or better yet, how well do you know your customers? Ask them some questions. Yep. Now, do not fall prey to the, to the sponsored story that does this, that asks you for your mother's maiden name, your first dog's place, your last four-year social, <laughs> and your credit card number. If you'd like to send that, you can send that too. No, don't do that. I'm not going to give you my email address. I don't want your info. That's just terrible. So please don't, uh, please don't do that. But yeah, this could be really fun. I can totally see this being useful. What about you, Gage? Oh yeah, I'm a huge fan of this because it's. I think it's there's utility on both sides. Like they're fun to answer, and then and then it's useful for a business to know more about the customer. I think it's a win, a win-win on both sides. And yeah, I'm a big fan of it. Cool, cool, Christian. What about you, buddy? You're going to use this. I, I want to test these out. I want to try these. Um, you know, again, if you see the video that's here, I mean, it's very easy to add. Uh, make sure you update your Instagram app. I think this is a very, very, very useful. You know, oh, it's not like a home free and then just publish it on Instagram and, you know, just expect it to like just do well. You do have to think these things through. Um, I used to work in market research and, you know, I ran quite a few uh, surveys and whatnot. And it was all about, you know, not just like you had to know, well, what's my goal with this? So, for example, when I want to include a quiz, like it seems, oh, yeah, let me just add a quiz sticker. But you do have to be smart with the questions you ask, the way you ask them, for example, you know, and know like what you're trying to get at and know what your customers want to actually really get out of it. Because it's not just and by the way, the other thing I think is very useful for this is to use it as feedback, like very valuable feedback that you can get from your customers. For example, it could be like. You know, let's say you want a new website design and you want to get your customer's feedback, not just like, hey, let me go on video and, you know, hey, what do you guys think of this? But um, incorporate, you know, quiz stickers, for example, for, you know, a website. You know, I'm really on my new website. What do you guys think? You know, and, and get your customers, you know, true experience, for example. So, yeah, um, or that's to, one useful or to prioritize way. for StreamYard, right, Gage? You could use this for four new features you're thinking about developing. No, now you can prioritize it, right? Yeah, yeah. For for feedback, it's awesome, especially if you have a engaged presence on Instagram. Yeah, if I if I if if, if our Instagram was a, most of our people are on Facebook, but yeah, right. I'll, we'll still experiment with it, but yeah, it's a great way to organically get feedback from people, like Christian was saying, because it's hard to it's a hard thing to gather feedback in a way that's not like in your face. Like you don't want to pull popping up on the web web page, like oh, what do you think of this web page? But it's a, that's a cool idea to get feedback on a new landing page or something just by asking on Instagram. I like that. And um, Natalia actually mentioned, she says, hey, when I first saw it, she was hoping they were going to give them multiple options for polls. That was kind of disappointing. I'd love to know, you know, Natalia, um, you know, depending on where you're watching, just, just let us know, like, um, I think that could be maybe you know, a feature, maybe. It's just how, how do you think they should implement that if they wanted to? Um, I like this. I really do. Um, very simple, you know, simply launch stories. Uh, this is available for iOS. It's for Android as well. Watch stories, go in and add your um, sticker as well. Let me actually find the part of the video here for you guys where you can actually um, learn how to add this. So I like these. Uh, yep. Do you guys have these yet? Have you checked your account? I've seen people do them. I have not played with mine yet, um, but I'm looking forward to looking forward to giving it a play probably later yeah. this week or next week. Yeah, yeah I, and I, as you guys get – go ahead. Oh, I'm just saying I just said I've seen them as well, but I haven't actually tested them. Yeah, I mean, here and here's the thing. It's very easy to so basically launch Instagram, uh, create something for stories, tap on the sticker, tap on the quiz option, and then go in and add your answers um, as well as your question. Very simple. You can change some colors here. You can add some additional stickers if you want to. That's it. So um, so you follow them. Uh, that's also another feature, by the way. If you're going to use you know quiz stickers, what I'd also recommend doing is making sure you go in and if, they, if you see people answering your quiz, for example, and you want to, like, uh, for example, let's say, you know, let's say Gage answers a question we have and, you know, we want to get more more information from him, we could easily then go, you know, follow him and then direct message him and say, hey, you know, thanks a lot for, like, you know, because it, it shows you as a business or an individual, it shows you you're actually paying attention. You know, you might go in and say, hey, Gage, um, you know, I really like the answer you gave about, you know, X. 
and you know, hey, we'd like to invite you into a focus group. That could be, for instance, moving them into a Facebook group or moving them into a community where it's just you know, like your think tank, for example. Um, right. It also helps you bring in the right people versus, hey, I bring in everyone and I get all this like feedback all over the place. Uh, yeah, you get good feedback and you know who it's coming from and the person who feels valued. Yep, good call. And it's, yeah, it's a cool feature. I'm a fan. So, uh, Phil, uh, any other topics you want to talk about today? Or we want to move into no, tool I think time? we should we move to... in our tool time, right? We've got a lot of stuff we could talk about. But, yeah, folks, sign yeah. up for the daily newsletter, right? Make sure that you get that. Uh, Christian puts out great stuff for you. It's at socialchefs.com slash daily. You get that. You get the recap. You get all the good stuff. It's socialchefs.com slash daily. We'll provide links to everything here so you can go deeper as well. If you struggle to go through this or if you're if you're on YouTube or you're watching this after the party and you're like, hey, I, I'm, I've got questions. You can always reply to that as well, and Christian will help. Will respond to that. So check yeah. that out. And if you have, you know, if you're, you have questions about any of the topics, for example, you want to test out Streamyard, you know, I uh, dropped a link in there as well. But um, you know, just definitely, like, don't be hesitant to ask questions. Or you're like, hey, I don't know how to find this feature, for example. Like, just I, I've been doing this for thirteen. So people and you know, helping you find the solution. So. Um, Okay, so it's one of my favorite parts of the show, and this is tool time. And you know, I, I'm excited about this. Uh, I always love trying to find new tools for everyone. Um, one of my favorite tools, uh, well, actually, we've got quite a few tools actually today. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and let me pull up this one first. Well, you know what? Let's talk about. You want to talk about Streamyard first, actually, Phil? Yeah, let, definitely. Yeah, let's make that our first topic here because you know, Gage is so here, let's talk man. Streamyard. Yeah, so yeah. let's start with Streamyard for sure. So. So StreamYard, for those of you that are unfamiliar, it is a great way to do your Facebook Lives, to broadcast to YouTube, and lots of other stuff really, really easily. So Gage, first, I got to ask you, man. So why there's a there's several platforms out there. Why did you guys get in the game? So uh, Dan and I had a lot of experience just working on video stuff in general. Uh, it was mostly like meeting type software. Um, but we were sort of looking at the landscape that was out there. And there's a lot of tools out there, and they're also isn't like we felt like nothing quite fit the bill for like we saw a lot of potential from a couple tools but we didn't think they were quite they we didn't think they were quite there so we wanted to make the perfect product essentially based on essentially free market research we had from a few other tools out there and right. saw what was working and really did a deep analysis on like okay what's the perfect way to make the simplest way to go live for your typical business owner that doesn't want to learn about obs or encoders or bit yeah. right, just wants to go live yeah. Yep. Um, so we really focused on product and how do we make the perfect product for that? Um, and we just, we thought there was a lot of potential there. So that's why we pursued that. Cool, man. Absolutely. And, and I will say this, um, speaking to kind of your point there, just a second ago, like some of the tools like did certain things, but some of them did, didn't do things. Uh, that was one of the main <laughs> reasons why I switched because I was waiting for the longest time. And I don't want to say waiting. I was hoping they were going to publish these tools and they just weren't happening. So, you know, I like the fact that you guys actually came in, swooped in and, you know, basically stole a whole bunch of customers, which I think is fantastic. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I mean, I say that honestly, I mean, like you came in and you basically, you know, you said, hey, like you looked at what other people did and you came out with a better product. And that's, you know, that's the right thing to do. So um, congrats on that. But so, uh, this is the, yeah. Yeah. So one thing, hey, so folks, if you're seeing Christian and he's the black square, that's because he decided that he wants to try the camera on two different screens at a time, which will crush your camera so do not do like christian's doing don't do that don't try to don't try to use zoom and Streamyard and facetime yeah. and six other tools at the same time because your camera can only hold one thing at a time that's why a tool like Streamyard is cool because you don't have to go to youtube you can use Streamyard; it'll go to youtube for you you don't have to go to facebook yeah. live it'll go to facebook live for you so just something to be aware of if you're looking at that and you're like what happened to his stream? Well, he, he tried to use the camera in two spots. He tried to use it on our show and he tried to use it on, an, on another sample to show you what's going on. So just something to be aware of. Definitely. So uh, so that's StreamYard, if you guys like, uh, what Anything you want to mention, uh, Gage, about like StreamYard in particular, like certain features or things people should be trying out um, or features that you yeah, have sure. that other competitors might not have? Sure. I thought you guys did a great job summarizing it, by the way. I appreciate that. You might want to just try turning your camera off and on again, Christian, if yep. you want to join us back okay. on screen. 
But um, yeah, so the main part, our main, I guess one thing I should just, who is StreamYard for? Our main, our number one priority is ease of use. So if you don't want to learn about complicated setups or anything like that, our number one priority is keeping it easy for everyone to just be able to go live. Um, and then after that comes stability. We want to make sure it's a rock solid product because it's already a high stakes scenario when you're going live. You want to eliminate as much possible uh, friction as far as tech issues and things like that. So we want to make sure the product's extremely stable. Um, and then our third uh, priority is making you look as professional as possible easily. So if those things sound good to you, definitely check out uh, StreamYard. We're, uh, we're working really hard to release uh, new and exciting features uh, quickly. Like for example, we just released the ability to upload uh, intro clips. So you can just upload a small MP4 as an intro uh, and play it. And um, I think it's really cool. So it could, because it's, it's just easy, right? Uh, like normally to do an intro video, you're having to have like another program open and pull in a video and it's, it's, it's hard on your system. It's hard to manage. It's a big cognitive load as far as what's going on. Whereas this, you can prepare beforehand, like, okay, upload my intro clip. I just play the intro clip and we save it for you, right? Like you don't have to upload it every time. Like if you're on one computer. Oh, and like, really? Yeah, yeah. So like I, I'm streaming on this one device, but oh, I'm on the road on my Chromebook. I still have my intro. I can still do my show. So we just try to focus on making everything super easy. That's that's our goal. Awesome. Yeah, I that's mean, that's great. And you guys can see. I can see you again. Yeah, I missed the first. Good. Part okay. Cool. Said, but. Oh, so what I was saying was, you know, like in addition to that, so like a couple of features they have, they've got a whole commenting section so they can pull in comments from the social media channels, obviously. Um, they've got banners. So you're probably wondering, well, hey, we put up this banner, for example, yeah. you know, the, the daily email, for example, um, we have that one uh, that's built in. We have, uh, you know, we can drop in, for instance, another one. In this case, this is a StreamYard link um, that we wanted to, you know, easily have at our disposal. So we can quickly drop that in. Uh, we can add additional banners. And, you know, and as you just mentioned, um, we've got brand colors in here. We can add our logo. I'll just drop in a couple of things here. For example, there's a logo. Um, we also have some other cool things that we got, for example, at the beginning of the show or for tool time, you always see us bring up an image uh, that's set as an overlay. And then we have backgrounds also that we've built. So I love what you, you guys know, have done, by the way. Your background's awesome. I really like, like the style and theme of your stream. It's one of the best ones I've seen. It's very cool. Thanks. It's a good theme. That's all, Christian. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just, means the, I'm just the on air talent. I, he's the he's the creative. <laughs> no, thank you so much. And I haven't yet tried the background uh, videos, but we're looking forward to implementing those as well into the show. Uh, again, I, I think I just implemented the background, and then you came out with the video background. And I, I was think like, I might oh, like I static can't. ones better, to be honest. I think it's a. Less I, 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 think, I think there's a tasteful level of movement yes. that you want to have. And I, yeah, I, I like, I, I love your background right now. I don't know if I, it's up to you, obviously, Thanks. but I like how it looks. No, now. no, no. Thank you so much. No, I, that means a lot. And you're absolutely right about backgrounds. You have to, you have to be very strategic with coming up with a background. You can't just put like a looping video in the background, and expect your audience to stay engaged. You want them to focus on the cameras. You know, that in this case, you want them to focus on myself, Phil and Gage here versus also having to compete with the background. Yeah. Uh, so keep that. Tastefully done, Christian. Yeah, overall. Nice. Yeah, it, it, even, it even has so, meaning. You look at the background, it's like, okay, this is a show about social media platform. Like, it's, it's very good. I like it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So that's, uh, that's StreamYard, by the way. You get that at socialchefs.com slash go forward slash StreamYard. Um, is there a trial there for people? Can they, is there like a seven day trial, 14 day trial? Yeah, there's a free version of the product, right? So you can okay. do yeah. all kinds of stuff with it for free. So you'll just be stuck with our, where Phil is, you'll have a, a little StreamYard duck in the corner there. Uh, <laughs> it works like this, right? It's yeah, this, yeah. right? Powered by yeah. StreamYard. So yeah, basically, there you yeah. go. You'll, have, you'll be able to go live. You can have up to six people. You'll be able to do essentially everything for free yeah. for as long as you want. So there's always that. It's if you want to get rid of that duck and you want some of the cool, like your own custom background and your own right. overlays and some mm -hmm. of those features that uh, you yeah. got to pay for. But also we have a referral yeah. system. So if you just want to use StreamYard for free, just tell your friends mm -hmm. about it and then you'll get credits and then you can use it for free. So without the duck. So. Awesome. And I, with, you know, just overall with StreamYard, um, you know, I'm doing this myself. So like, I don't have, I don't have a production team here working with me, you know, Phil and I like do some chats offline and whatnot to get things organized. But this is basically me running this while we're here on camera. Um, so it's not complicated. And so I want to encourage, do I? Yes. Very impressive. 
I know, right? <laughs> but I'd say, you know, this is just something to try, test it out, see how it works. Um, you know, and as you mentioned, like there's, you don't have to actually sign up for a plan. You can try the free version, see how it works, get used to it, and then move into those things as you need the features and functionality. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and bring up, by the way, the uh, the two tool, other two tools that we want to cover real quick. Yeah, let's um, start with one blogcast. of these. Start with blogcast. Yeah, let's talk about Blogcast. So yeah. Blogcast is a very interesting tool. You get this by going to um, socialchefs.com forward slash go forward slash blogcast. And this is a pretty cool. Basically, what it is, will use artificial intelligence to generate an audio version of your written content. Basically, what it's doing is creating a podcast version for your articles. Um, pretty fantastic tool. Uh, Phil, have you had a chance to try this out or anything? So, well, I, I, che I checked it out. I listened. So I What'd think this think? is interesting because it's going the opposite way that I would expect, right? I'm all about going, I, I don't like, not that I'm a bad, terrible writer, but I'd rather talk and then transcribe right. and then edit. Okay. And so this is interesting. This is write, edit, I guess, make your perfect article and then have it read. The challenge yep. with that is it reads it not in my voice, of course. It reads it in an AI yeah. voice and mm -hmm. it reads it word for word without the intonation and the enunciation that I have. So it doesn't know right. my diction, right? So, but that being said, if you hate your own voice, if you don't like your own voice and you want a podcast and you're a great writer, this could be a cool opportunity for you because people are able to multitask voice because they can put it in their ears while they're working out, right? Like I'm sitting right here, right? I got my earbuds that are charging while we're on. If I go work yeah. out, right, I might pop on a podcast because right. I can do that and I can go exercise. Or I might do that when I'm, you know, making lunch or something. So I think this is an interesting way. I'm curious though, like, how is this going to pick up? How, yeah. how many people are going to say, yep, I want someone else's voice reading my content. So if we read that, Blogcast is a friendly robot who likes reading and podcasting, and he wants to help you increase impressions on your articles. I mean, if I'm going to read that as me, very yeah. different, right? Very, very different. And Gage might read it differently than me. And mm -hmm. Christian, you might read it differently from Gage. Yeah. And so I get none of your personality. If it was just content, right? we'd see a lot different thing. But remember, I mean, we see this on Instagram, right? It is about personality. It is about your right. style. It's about what the heck's your weird, right? So I don't know. Interesting. Not sure how, how effective. I don't know. Gage, what do you think, man? Honestly, my thoughts are almost exactly what you said. The other, the, it's very, I mean, conceptually, very cool idea. Um, but yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm not having a robot <laughs> read my blogs, right? If it was, if there was a bit more of an AI element to it, that would make it right. more interesting, I think, where if it really had, and again, I didn't look at it too closely, so maybe it does, but if, if it was, you couldn't even tell it was a robot reading it and they actually had inflection and, a, and that type of stuff, that might be interest, more interesting. Um, but conceptually, I think, I think it's cool. But like Phil was saying, I think the other direction, at least for me, uh, is, is more appealing to me. Because yeah. AI in general, I'm still sort of skeptical of it. I like I like AI that sort of enhances the human element rather than just tries to take it over. Because I just don't think that's gonna. At least I just I think it'll be a while before that can perform at the same level. So I like the ones where yeah, like you have a podcast, it turns it into a blog. But at least that it's like okay, now it's just formatted for you, and you can go through and edit it. It just it sort of just speeds up the process rather than like oh yeah, I've got a robot writing blogs for me. That's not really how I would think about it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's a, it's, it's definitely a cool concept and, and I'll, I'll keep an eye on it. I'd be curious how you, how do you go about finding your tools for tool time? Because this is a small, it's, it's not, I, I noticed it's not very well known tool. No, um, some of these, I just come across. I mean, I just, I come across them, um, whether I'm looking for something, I, I'm constantly doing research. So I happen to find things, um, stuff that's different. And, you know, I try not to feature a lot of the standard tools that people use stuff that can actually add some value. By the way, I do want to bring up this this example here. And by the way, this is actually, I think it was built by like a 17 year old and he built it in a very short amount of time. So it does prove also that like, you don't have to be this big, you know, a programmer, for example, that you can teach yourself programming and, and learn how to do this. All right, push play. Yeah, Let's hear what we hear. Oh, poop. Doesn't play through, but it's like my voice. Isn't I woke up. It should no, we don't hear it. I'll read it. Okay. Right. I can read it right. 
<laughs> I woke up on Monday with a strange idea. After working on micro products, I built two Chrome extensions in less than an hour each and small products, products whose development lasted less than a day. I wanted to build and release something new, but I didn't want it to take me a year. I mean, that's the whole thing because I listened to it this yeah. morning. I mean, I can do that robot voice too. I, d uh, I don't think, and for a buck an article, again, if people tell you they want your stuff in audio, this is a great right. idea. A buck an article, yeah. you write, an, this is five bucks a month. Right. Five bucks a month for, for an mm -hmm. article a week. This changes the yeah. game, right? Like I've got a client that I'm actually going to talk to today that I'm going to say, mm -hmm. we should try this. For me, right. not my brand, not my brand. Uh -uh, my personality is my brand, right? I, got, I don't have any right. talent, mm -hmm. but I got a personality. So that's, that's what's going right. to sell for me. But for some of these, right, if we're talking to developers and it's code mm -hmm. talk, the right. cadence of this is good enough that it'll stay in your ear and it'll give you what you need so that you can yeah. listen in the background. I think this this has potential, just not for a personality driven brand. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think you make great points, you know, in uh, reading what Barb mentions here, you know, she says, you know, hey, um, no way would she spend time with that tool. She said she, uh, she said she'd go live with StreamYard. You can feature, let's see, uh, you can feature your blog as a screen share and read it to your audience while you're live on multiple platforms. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, again, there's different ways to um, uh, different ways to skin a cat, basically. So basically you can do things, you know, multiple different ways um, that are going to help accomplish the same goal. So again, I tested out. I mean, kind of as Phil mentioned, you can tap into the finger and quote stickers. Sorry, um, you could tap into that, and maybe you talk to your audience and ask them, "Hey, you know, would you like it if we had an audio version of our, you know, articles? For example, if you're publishing more blog content, some, you know, and you know, and the people that say yes, you know, ask them, well, hey, how do you, you know, ask them more probing questions? How are you listening to the content? For example, are you listening to them on a drive? Or are you, you know, listening to it during a commute? You know, you're taking the subway, um, you know, the metro. You know, or are you carpooling with somebody? Are you in an Uber? You know, if that's something that um, they come back and say, well, hey, you know, I mainly, you know, if they say I take public transportation, chances are they're going to want an audio version because they're not going to necessarily have good, you know, uh, usually not necessarily the best, like, you know, strongest internet signal, for example. So it might be something worthwhile testing. But again, you want to test it out. You don't just want to roll this out and say, hey, I'm going to do this for everything. Test it out. See what your audience you know, finds interesting. Uh, like it. Uh, article. It's also something, I mean, for a dollar, an article, that's not much. So, yeah, worth a try. Um, so the second tool that we have, and I'm going to try to leave a couple minutes here, by the way, for people to uh, ask about um, StreamYard as well, because I think we got some questions there, Gage. Um, so second tool is called Backpack Studio. You know, and Phil, th this I think really plays to what you were talking about earlier, which was you have a podcast, you're trying to get published, and you know you don't necessarily have the time to do it, or you're running out of the time. Basically, what this is, it's a ten dollar app, and it is an entire uh, recording studio on your mobile device. So basically what you can do is you can have different sound clips. For example, you could put together an intro, um, an outro, and you know maybe there's like, you know, for example, something else that's recorded in the middle. And then you can call these up on, for example, an audio. You can also tie this into live video. For example, I can call this into StreamYard if I want to as well. StreamYard is, but um, definitely I, I, I like this tool, I have it. I, I think it's like super, super, super awesome for what it does, um, having all of it in your pocket. Uh, you can do it for live video. You can do it for just a podcast. You can do it for, you know, an Alexa flash briefing. If you create those as well, like we have one for our show at socialstuffs.com slash Alexa. But um, definitely something I think I'd, I'd test it out um, if you think you totally. need to record audio. Uh, totally. What do you guys think about this tool, by the way? Yeah, it's got potential, right? For 10 bucks to mix my own podcast versus 40 bucks an episode, probably to have somebody do it for me. I think this yeah. is fantastic. This really gives a you know, great opportunity for me uh, to look at that. Now, that being said, um, I, you know, I, I still need the originals created, right? That's the thing. Right. So, but right. I spent, let's say I spent 200 bucks on the front end. I get an intro, I get an outro, I get a couple of bumpers for segments right. of the show. I yeah. think that's really cool. I can do it, then I could probably, I'm guessing, Gage, I could probably upload that if it exports as an MP4. I could probably yep. upload that to StreamYard, right? So yeah. that I can use that in between. So this has got a lot of purpose, a lot of opportunity here. What do you, what do you think, Gage? 
No, I think it's cool. I'll, I'll, I'll have to do a bit of testing to really get a better understanding of uh, what I could use it for. But if it makes it easy to quickly record a po podcast on your phone, I mean, I totally get that. Lots of people are traveling all the time and you want to make sure you don't miss episodes. So that's if, if it if it makes that experience better. I'm a, I'm a fan for sure. I'd be curious, um, like what kind of stuff can you do with this app that you wouldn't be able to do in something like the Anchor app? Does Anchor not have any of that sort of stuff? So Anchor gives you more of the graphic side of things. And I you know I think they just got bought by, was it Spotify, I think? Yep. Um, so, you know, Spotify, who knows what Spotify is going to do. I know the one big uh, downside to Anchor is that anything you upload and like say you have it create an image with their nice little audiogram or audiographic on there. Um, rights to that. Oh, yeah. Which okay, that's a good point. Yeah. So I, I'd just be concerned with it from that perspective, um, what you're uploading, because it's like, hey, it's very easy to use. It looks really nice, but you don't really, you're kind of just giving them access no, to the basically. Yeah, with this thing, you have, you own everything you make with this thing. So yeah, right yeah. on. Yeah. So, but um, uh, if you, you know, if you want to test this with uh, StreamYard, by the way, I'm happy to work with you guys on that. Um, I definitely think that it's something, that, it's some stuff that we're going to start working on. Um, yeah. But it's a very, very, very useful tool, I think. Um, so do we have a couple of minutes, by the way, Phil? I think we got yeah, so let's, maybe yeah, with... so let's take a couple of minutes. So first, hey, so if you've been listening to this and you enjoy, please like, comment, share, let people know. Don't keep us a secret. If we, you know, the value is often in the replay, not just in the live uh, conversation. Yeah. We love your comments in real time. We love that you can also do watch parties, watch this with your friends, get feedback. And if you get anything that's really useful, please let us know come back, leave us a comment, let us know. Because remember, watch parties are for you and your friends. We don't get to see those. So while we love the fact that you're watching our videos, we want your feedback. We want to know how we can be better. So come on back to facebook.com slash social chefs. Let us know what you think about this episode or any of the episodes. And if you share us, we know sharing's caring and we appreciate you so much. So um, for those of you watching, what StreamYard questions do we have, by the way, um, about the product? Uh, I'm going to look through the comments here. But just post them in the comments. Uh, we'll do our best to answer them because you've got Gage, co-founder of Streamyard, on here. The man. Yeah, well, I, I've got a quick question for you guys. Like, what's what's the most exciting uh, stuff on social media for you guys right now? Like, what are you making? What's the main thing you guys are doing on? Like, what's your go-to strategy as far as what you're interested in right now? Like for me, it's Facebook. So, like, what are you guys all about? I like Facebook groups. I got to say that um, I've liked them for a long time. I've done a few talks on Facebook groups. I, I think there's a lot of usefulness because you get, you know, I'm glad Facebook added the ability for pages to join certain groups if the group allows it, but it's all about the people. It's not about the, like, it, you know, I don't want to connect with the business and basically not know who I'm talking with. Um, I think groups, you know, if people are not seeing a lot of success with pages when they post content and then have to spend money for ads just to get that content seen, groups are definitely a, a way to do that, I think. Um, that's what I would I would focus on as well. Uh, I love groups. So, yeah, uh, Phil, what do you think? Anything well, for me, I, I like live no video. LinkedIn. Yeah. I, well, yeah, LinkedIn, of course, right? And but <laughs> I like live video. Uh, live videos for me because I'm pretty unedited, pretty unscripted. Um, I'm yeah. my like my brain is chaotic. I've got a weird mix of you know skills and thoughts and stuff. So, um, so I really like live video. I'm looking forward to to that point. Please make sure that when LinkedIn comes out with Live Gauge, you guys integrate with it if you can. If oh, there's yeah, an wait. API. It's, it's number one on our good, or not number one, it's, but it's up there as far as priorities. So, we're, we're just waiting for access from them, and then yeah, yep. we plan on adding it. Yeah, so let me know, man. I'll be your number one fan for that. Um, because that's my jam. Like, I spend a lot of my day on LinkedIn looking at stuff. Um, and then on a personal level, I'm playing around more personally with with Instagram. Um, okay. more it's in it's more interesting, uh, visually. Right. Now, I'll tell you, um, I miss the feedback though, because most of my friends do like they're Facebookers, right? They really like right. Facebook. So that's where they hang out. And I've got a big audience on Facebook of not just numbers, but I mean, like people I actually give a crap about. So I want to hear what they have to say. I mean, so that's, that's pretty cool because I see as we move to more stories, I think we're going to get more insulated from each other. Mm -hmm. I think this is a move to more potential privacy, but more less serendipity, which is right. my favorite mm -hmm. part of social is the serendipity. Right. I mean, Gage, dude, I'd have never expected that I get to talk to the co-founder of StreamYard. Like, <laughs> no, I mean it, man. I mean, that's really cool, right? I mean, you made an app. It's yeah. really a cool app. And because of serendipity, here we are today. 
right? Yeah. This is cool stuff, man. Yep. The, the, and that's that's my challenge with stories is I'm going to see Christian's story. And unless Christian happens to mention you on a day that I'm watching his story and he has the ability so I can swipe up and go to you, I'm never going to meet you. Yeah, I'm totally point. gonna miss that. You know, that breaks my heart, man. This the social let we call it now social media, but it's really for me social networking. So yeah. I'm more excited about the ability. You know, like if we could, I can bring somebody on live right now on Streamyard, that is damn cool. That's exciting to me because that's what I want, right? I want somebody. I want Barb that leaves a great comment. I want to be able to bring her on the show and ask her a question, like right yeah. now. That is freaking mm -hmm. cool. So I'm excited about what that future looks like. And then to that point, then the hard part for me is then the consistency of of um, of uh, distribution. Right. right. Consistency of distribution is the hardest part because it's easy to do a live show. Frankly, we can spend an hour, we can talk, and then it's gone. So we have to be sure that we distribute it. You know, 20, 50, 100 times, or nobody's going to watch. And so right. that's one right. thing. Um, and doing that in a valuable way is really hard. Yeah. So we got two questions, by the way. Um, both these are from the same person, uh, Natalia. So Natalia is asking, she wants to know, besides uh, Facebook and YouTube, where else can people stream to on StreamYard? Yeah, that's a good question. So the, we have direct integrations with Facebook and YouTube. Mm -hmm. And now we just recently added Restream. So if you decide to use Restream, then you can go pretty much anywhere, right? Because yeah. then you're sort of handling the distribution on Restream side. So if you're right. connected to Restream, you can go to Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and tons of platforms that I don't even know the name of. They've got tons of platforms. Um, yeah, and I'm actually going to pull that list up. Yeah, I'll, for sure. I'll read it off. Um, but we also have the ability, it's called RTMP, which basically just allows you to send the feed wherever you want. Um, the downside of that okay. is that you it's not a direct integration, so we're, we can't get comments from wherever you're going. Um, right. Because with YouTube and Facebook, we're literally talking to them and like, hey, what are the comments? And can that way you can show them on screen and stuff like that. So to answer the uh, question about where else you can stream to, so if you basically use StreamYard and then you hook in Restream.io, two separate tools basically, uh, StreamYard for actually doing the live video production, uh, restream for simulcasting or broadcasting to multiple channels that will give you access to uh, Facebook live. Uh, this, so basically you've got Facebook live for personal profiles, mixer, Twitch, uh, YouTube gaming, Periscope, VK live. And some of these channels you may not have heard of. Um, there's YouTube events, YouTube stream now, uh, Panda TV. Let's see. Um, you gotta be on Panda Mob, TV. That's where it's at. Yeah. Mob crush. Vapor, I think it's gaming stuff. There's uh, tons of crazy gaming uh, streaming platforms. Yeah. I mean, 15, 20, 20, there's like 30, 40. There's Ustream, Steam. Like there's probably 40 something. And then one for one their. Kind of interesting is DLive. That's the one that that big YouTuber guy re recently switched to that seems to be growing yeah. extremely fast. Definitely. Um, but yeah. So, and then if you want to be able to stream to like Facebook groups and pages, you could go there. You get the custom RTP, RTMP option uh, to Wowza and Akame. So, those, when you go into the paid plan, uh, Akame and Wowza, those are basically um, high end uh, tools, basically. They're what, you know, somebody wants to broadcast, for example, um, to like a live event at an arena, for example, they might be using. Uh, Akame, for example. So this is a good uh, option there, but that's through Restream, which is an add-on. Uh, it's a separate purchase uh, for StreamYard. So as far as the R RTMP, by the way, that was the other question somebody had. Um, about RTMP server options for StreamYard. So how does that work exactly, I guess, the RTMP so, side? Yeah, so um, I missed the first part, but I think I can interpolate what yeah, you're sure. saying. So I think, so you just, you just select the RTMP server option, and then all these sites, like whether it's Periscope uh, yeah. or YouTube, or it, so as far as the yeah, as far as the options, you can go anywhere you want, yeah. right? Because it's just the URL and the key, and pretty much every platform has an, a URL and a key, and then you can use that to go wherever you want. Definitely. Okay. Yeah, and um, you know, and again, I mean, you get the streaming settings. So, for example, in Restream, you get the RTMP option. Um, as well, you just copy those in, you put them into your platform and it'll basically sync everything up. Uh, but um, anything else, Phil, you want to cover this week, by the way? No, I, well, I, I guess I'm just going to close with something that I think is important. And, and that is find a tool that works, find an easy tool that works, a tool like StreamYard that can do a lot of the stuff that you want to do. 
and then go deep. Like pick one. You don't have to do everything. Just pick one. Try it out. You could do you could do video by yourself. If you happen to get some comments, see if they want to come on the screen. See if they want to come on mm -hmm. your show, right? See if they want to have a conversation. Ask your customers, right? That's where these polling stickers come into play. They're pretty cool, right? Um, I, I like the fact that you can ask questions, uh, but be really curious. Find out in your business. The best way to create great content, folks, is to really give a crap about your customers and to find out mm -hmm. what are their challenges. You know, this show, we're dedicated to the newest and latest breaking news in social so that you don't have to worry about reading 87 sources. We take care of the top four or five every week for you. We introduce you to a couple of tools you can try, you can play with. And if you have questions, we're here for you. So let us know. Let us know how we can help you. Um, and Gage, thanks so much for being here, man. It was really great to talk yeah. to you. Yeah, it's good to talk to you too. Thanks yeah. so much for having me on. And uh, yeah, I really like your guys' show because mostly for the reason uh, Phil said is there's just so much stuff out there and I can't read a hundred blogs. So it's really nice to just have someone filtering through and like, okay, these are some things to keep an eye on and be interested in. So yeah, make sure you guys follow this show. I've, I've seen quite, uh, probably four or five episodes and I'm, I'm a fan for sure. It's a good show. Thanks. Thank you. So what's the best place for people to get in touch with you, by the way? So obviously uh, StreamYard, uh, StreamYard platform, uh, but where do, where do you want people to connect with you if they have questions or... Facebook's whatnot. best. So there's a, the StreamYard Facebook page. So if you if you just okay. if you just type StreamYard into Google, the Facebook page will probably come up there. And then you can either just message us there if you have support questions. And then we have uh, a community group, which is a pretty fun group. So you can join that community group. And I'm very active there. And I'm happy to answer your questions and help you out. And there's other people there too that know more than I do about various technical setups that are very generous with their time there. So yeah, check that group out. And I gotta say, I'm part of the same group, and I, you know, it's it's of an amazing group because you go there and you have other people that are also into live streaming, um, you know, and, and, you know, and they can quickly help you solve a problem uh, or, you know, and also, I know you guys uh, sometimes tease like different, uh, you know, features that are coming out or things you're working on as well. So you've got the excitement going uh, too. So um, I wish you best of luck with StreamYard. Um, uh, and I want to thank you for joining us this week, taking a little bit of your time. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to go and work on my video intros and my outros um, and see what I can, you know, come up with for the show. But thanks a lot for adding those features. Um, so for those of you uh, watching, uh, that's it for this week's episode, episode 188. Um, if you want to get the blog post recap, Phil mentioned this a couple of times, go to socialchefs.com forward slash daily. Basically what that's going to do is get you our daily email. I will email you the blog post tomorrow, the recap with all the links, with all the, with the Alexa flash briefing, all that sort of stuff. So you can uh, consume the content if you want to. Um, if you have questions, leave them in the comments, leave them on our social platforms, tag me, tag us. Uh, we'll answer those. Um, and then the other question or other thing I also just want to let everybody know, next week we've got another show. Uh, we're going to have Chelsea Pites back on. Uh, we've had her on actually a number of times. Uh, she does uh, digital marketing uh, mainly for real estate. Uh, very, uh, just an amazing personality, um, just a great person to also talk to. But she'll be on next week. That'll be at, uh, I think, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Same Time. Yep. Same time on Thursday. But we will see you guys later. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Uh, have a good rest of the week, and we'll see you later. Bye.